Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. Today's video we're going to be again continuing on our third person shooter minigame series which we're creating. So today we're going to be setting up the basic part of the enemy. So we're just going to be making the enemy blueprint and making sure that it's always going to be running at and chasing the player. And I think that's probably all we're going to do for the enemy in today's video. And in a future video, probably the next one, we're going to be making sure that we can spawn them in in a kind of horde wave system type thing. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So I'm going to go into my game files folder right click and create a new folder naming this one enemy just to again keep it nice and organized and inside this folder I'm going to right click add a blueprint class and I'm going to add a character so we've now got a character blueprint and I'm going to name this one enemy BP opening up like so let me put on the correct monitor here so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to be using the default mannequin mesh for this but changing it to look slightly different you can obviously use your own mesh if you want but again I'm just going with the basics to teach you how to do this so I'm going to select the mesh, I'm going to choose to be the mannequin, so the SK mannequin here. I'm going to give it the animation blueprint of the third person anim BP, like so. So now we have our enemy mesh in here, simply like so. Again, I'm just going with the basic part. However, you'll notice that this is facing the wrong direction, and it's also halfway up in the capsule. So simply, we can just move and rotate this down to be where we want it to be. So I've moved it down, and I've rotated it. So now that is a lot better for what we want. And you can obviously increase the size of the capsule or decrease the size of the mesh if you wanted. Make it again fit perfectly for you. So what I think I'm gonna do is just make the size of the capsule component a little bit bigger. Here we are, half height and radius. I'm just gonna increase the radius ever so slightly just to fit a little bit better like so. Compile and save that. And again, I want this to stand out a little bit more so it's easy to define this from the player. So I'm going to select the mesh here and you can see we have element 0 and element 1 for the materials. I'm going to hit the magnifying glass next to the material to take me to it in the content browser, minimize this and now we have it here. So I've already done this, let me delete these. So what I'm simply going to do is just make this red so that we can tell that it is an enemy and it is bad. So I'm going to hold control and select both these materials, right click on them and hit duplicate like so. Then we're going to open up both of these like this. With the first one, the MUE4 Man Body 2, what I'm going to do is just go all the way to the right and find the body color parameter we have here. This I'm going to change from being a gray to a nice red instead. So again, we're getting a nice red instead of gray, so we can easily tell that it is an enemy. And I'm going to apply that. Doesn't matter too much how it looks, because again, you might be using a different mesh completely, customizing it better for you. So now we have that nice red color there. I'm going to close that. And on the chest logo, I also want this to be red. So I'm simply going to change the parent material from the original man body to the enemy man body, which for me is man body 2. So I'm going to select that one there like so. We can save and then also close that. What I'm also going to do is with these two selected, I'm going to press this button here to show all of the different folders. And I'm going to drag them into my enemy folder, which we've just made. Move here. Then we're going to open that folder close this panel and create a new folder called materials just to again keep it nice and organized so everything we want is in the same place and I might also just rename these to enemy body instead of man body like so again that's not massively important but I just want to do it anyway so now we're going to open up our character blueprint once again for our enemy BP and now we want to change these materials down here so what we can do is just minimize this ever so slightly like so select the material we want so for me that's the body scroll down inside of the enemy blueprint so we now have the materials here and press this arrow here so we change it like so and now you can see we have this as a red body and red logo instead of the default white or gray kind of thing so compile and save and now you can see we have it as a nice red instead of gray so it's easily definable from the character to the enemy that's just what i want to do to have this as a separate mesh so that's customizing and creating the enemy. Now we want to make sure that they're always going to chase the player. So I'm going to go over to the event graph, delete begin overlap and delete event tick. I'm not going to use event begin play. Out of this, we're going to cast to our character blueprint, which for me is the UE4 ASP character. I'm going to get an object and get get player character as that object, like so. And then we're going to right click as our character promote it to a variable naming this character reference and this is just so we have easy access 
to the reference of our character for whenever we want to use it, i.e. for the object the AI enemy should be chasing. So I'm also going to right click and add a custom event just underneath this, naming this chase player. And we're going to create an input on this. So up in the top right we have inputs. I'm going to hit the plus new parameter, naming this one player to chase or just player or anything like that. And we're going to change this from a boolean to a reference to our character. So for me that's going to be UE4 ASP character object reference like so. Compile and save. So again the input is going to be our, an object reference for our player character. An out of chase player, the custom event, what I'm going to do is get an AI move to like that. The pawn is going to be self because what the pawn does is it knows which AI we are moving, so which one we are controlling. And the target actor is where the AI is going to. So if we want it to always go to an updated location for the player, we can just input the player to chase there from this custom event value, which again is going to be our character reference, which we're going to do in a second. So this is now going to chase the player continually, always updating their location whenever they move, because we're chasing the actor, not the location. However, if they reach the player, what's going to happen is they will stop moving. So on success, what I want to do is I want to call the event of chase player. So I'm going to call function chase player like so, and I'm also going to connect that into on fail like that. So if it fails to or it does succeed in reaching the player, but they're not dead yet, we're going to just continue to keep chasing them. However, you can see now we need to input other player to chase into this event so they know which player they are chasing. Simply, we can just input our character reference variable that we just made previously into there. So this is going to go into the function, which is going to go into the AI move to here. And we're going to do the same off event begin play to initially call this. So back up, event begin play, call function chase player, player to chase is this character reference we're setting there. So now what's going to happen when the enemy spawns in, it's going to be continually chasing the player character. So we're going to hit compile, save, minimize, and the final step to do is we need to make sure we can actually allow this enemy to move in the level. So to do that, we need to search and place actors in the top left for a nav mesh bounds volume here, putting that into the level. And again, the nav mesh bounds defines the location and the area in which enemy AIs, or just AI, sorry, can move about. So I'm going to set its location to 0, 0, 0, and then just scale this up to be the correct size which I want for my map. So again, this is everywhere in which AI can move about on your map, so just scale this up or down accordingly to that. Now for me, you can't actually see where the nav mesh bounds is. So a simple way to see where the AI can move is hitting P on your keyboard, and you can see I now have this green flooring here. So the green part is where the AI can move. If it's not green, they can't go there. So that's a good debugging, simple way to know if it's working or not. So now I'm just going to drag in a few enemy blueprints in here, and we should see that this is going to work perfectly, chasing us. And again, in a future video, probably the next one, we're going to set up the enemy spawner. So this is just a simple test at the moment to make sure it works. Let's hit play, and you can see they are running at us. However, they are a little bit too fast for our character. But as you can see again, when they reach us, they do continue to chase us until we obviously kill them, which again, we're going to set up in a future video. So let's open up our enemy blueprint again, select the character movement, search for the max walk speed, and just change their speed, which I think I'm going to set to 300, because again, that's a value which I found earlier. So compile, save, and let's test this out. So they are faster than us by walking, but we can run and outpace them like so. But just by walking, they're going to be slightly faster than us, which again will just keep up the pace of the mini game to make sure that you can't just constantly run away forever. They are always going to be able to keep up with you, unless of course you're running. So maybe we can add stamina in a future video if you wanted. Again, this is now going to work perfectly for us. We have the enemy always chasing us throughout the entire game at this speed. And what we can maybe do is give them a random speed so they're all going to be running at different speeds so they don't clump up like that which again might be something which you want to do. So in actual fact, let's do that now. So we're going to go back into our enemy blueprint here and we're going to get the character movement again off of event begin play because we can do this all the start. It doesn't need to be different. We can just do it like this and this will still be efficient. And out the character movement, we're going to set max walk speed like so. Connecting that into there like so. 
And what I'm going to do is just get a select node, and not a select float, but select under utilities. And this way we can add as many options as we want. So I want them to maybe have a speed of 200, 250, 300, and another pin for 350. So they're going to be able to have four different speeds like so. You can set it up to have as many different speeds as you want, or you can just get a random float in range. However, that will also do 200, 200.1, 200.2, which I don't want. I want you to be bigger, more notable numbers like this. So again, set it up for what you want, and you don't even need to do this part, but I think it's just going to add another nice touch. And then the index of this select is going to be a random integer, just a normal random integer there, with the max being 3. Because you can see we have integer 0, 1, 2, and 3, so we need to be able to go up to integer 3. So we have four options, which means three integers, because again, we start counting at 0. So we'll compile, save. Now all the enemy blueprints will have slightly different speeds for their walking and running. So again, you can kind of see that there. The one at the very back is walking. This one's running. This one's running slightly slower, but faster than the one at the back. So again, this is now working perfectly. We have enemies running at us, always chasing with different speeds as well. So again, it just keeps it nice and realistic, looking a little bit different each time. So I think that'll be it for this video. It's we've done everything we want to do. We've set up the initial character, enemy blueprint, sorry, in which we've just made them red like so. They're always going to be chasing us and they have different walk speeds. So it keeps it nice and dynamic for us. And in future episodes, we're going to be setting up shooting and killing them and also the enemy spawner so we don't have to place them in the level like so. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.